Welcome to another episode of this stupid podcast I do from my apartment in Clearwater, about to be my house. Well, it's been, it's all over the news, so we're going to talk about China. You know, Right when this pandemic started, I did a podcast and I said that the entire world needs to reevaluate their relationship with China. You know, you got a lot of people in a lot of countries. I don't think there's anything wrong with making money. I think there's something wrong with being disloyal to your country. Like, I get it. If you're a Chinese spy and you're over here and you're bribing people, you're doing what you think is best for your nation. If you're a guy in the Chinese military, you're a guy that feels that he's serving his country. I get all that. The one thing I don't get is I would never betray America for money. I I mean, what I would do if I was offered money, well, I can't say never. I'm just saying 99.99% of the time. Yeah, yeah. If America turned into a tyrannical state, yeah, I'm going to betray the country because you betrayed the Constitution. But, you know, I I would go to the proper authorities like, hey, this dude's trying to blackmail me for some information so you can give it to his China bosses and they're offering me money. I'd be like, let's bust these guys. But, you know, so... I, I, I get it, I get it. But the, the thing is, man, is it's disturbing because it's come out. I don't know if you saw this. Recently, there was a video of this. I don't know why a Chinese professor would be this dumb to think that something this salacious would be kept a secret even though China loves to censor stuff. It's basically impossible, and it's going to get more and more impossible in the future to hide information, or maybe we'll turn into a tech uh, dystopia but where you're spied upon and the elites do what they want but he came out and he said he thinks that our tell people not to worry that he had, that, that the Chinese have a lot of people in the inner circles of America and if that's the case man it's disturbing on a lot of levels Um, and these people need to be rooted out, but it it just goes to show you the level of the level of how much China is not an ally of ours. Yeah. Look, it came out that we were spying on Germany. Germany pretended to be outraged. Like, yeah, it's not like we spy on America. Well, all the countries spy on each other. All countries interfere and meddle in other countries' elections. You know, you can't say that Germany, by and large, not liking Donald Trump and people around the globe voicing their opinions that Donald Trump shouldn't be president, which I personally now fully and totally believe that he was railroaded by a system, let's just call them globalists. What I mean by that is there is an element of high-ranking elites around the world that want to install basically a worldwide form of communism. It's not a conspiracy theory. Listen to my uh, podcast on the Great Reset or just go listen to anybody on the Great Reset. It's something they want. The only problem with America is with their little plan for world domination is American citizens are armed to the teeth and people know that in around the world. And they also know there's a streak of independence in America that just isn't going to tolerate, you know, that level of bullshit. Like, you know, uh, Klaus Schwab, you'll eat less meat in the future. Uh, okay. Billionaire dude. If you don't want me buying meat, I'll just go hunt it. Well, you can't go hunting. Well, what do you plan to do with all these animals now that we've eliminated the, uh, the the predator population that is exploding and eating the plants that you want me to eat, douchebag? But 
it goes that that being said, China is not a friend to anybody in the world. China is probably the United States is no different. They're concentrating on America because we're the most powerful country in the world right now. But we need to deal with China. Like it disturbed me that there was a Chinese professor on stage bragging about the fact that China owns the inner circle in America. Guess who they own? Uh, Biden, Camilla Harris. You know, and Google is actively trying to perfect the same uh, level of technology and great filter that they use over in China because they helped them do it, trying to use it in America. So, I mean... There's, there's a lot of similarities between, you know, China's surveillance state and what big tech is doing. Because big tech, you know, when I talk about the inner circle, there's nothing bigger than big tech. And big tech is, in a lot of ways, trying to emulate the Chinese government, where they just think that they get to decide, you know, what you get to read. Oh, if, well, there's anything about the election being stolen, we're going to yank it off YouTube because we're a bunch of communist dicks. You know, and it's like, why? I, I get the argument. I get the argument. Well, then start your own company. I don't understand. Well, first off, do you think Google's really not going to, you know, drop me in the rankings if I did that? But I don't understand why Fox News doesn't just come out and say, oh, okay, Here's our website. Upload your videos to it. We're not going to censor speech on it. You know, you could have multiple platforms doing this, which would erode Google's power. Because, I mean, when you look at it like this, YouTube is, YouTube is pretty much the only game in town. Yeah, there's other sites you can upload, but they're nowhere near as popular. That's like I said, that's why I don't understand why other companies aren't getting in on the upload your videos game, or videos game, not video games, but videos that you took. I, I don't get it. I really don't. I don't have the technical know-how to make another YouTube, but there's a lot of companies out there. Like if I was working, if I was consulting for Fox, I'd be like, okay, you see the game Google's playing, play it right back. Create, bring somebody in, Fox News, right, or CNN, but they're in league with big tech, so they're not going to do it. But Fox News comes up and they said, okay, you can air your, upload your videos onto our site that YouTube keeps taking down. That's how you begin to do it. But big tech and the, the, the how balls deep they are with China should disturb every member of the public. I don't understand this, this thing that is on the left for censorship. Talk about it all the time. Censorship is inherently dangerous. It's a communist idea. It's because once you start down the road of censorship, it just controls speech to the, all the way till if you criticize the current government. You know, that's where you start is, well, that was hate speech. Okay, well, then you go to, I don't really like Joe Biden. Okay, that's against the government narrative. That's the way it always goes. So I don't understand why anybody on either side of the aisle would want that. You know, it's only people that want power. It's the same thing with governments that don't want guns proliferating in their country. They know they're the great equalizer. Get in that boxcar. Okay, well, I'm not going and I'm going to take a few of you with me. How's that? You know? But yeah, it's disturbing the level of penetration that China has allowed. It's an inherent vulnerability that we have as a free society that we should be guarding against. See, China doesn't have it, it it's not the same level of threat us infiltrating their government because they're run by the communist party and it's a communist dictatorship it's really an authoritarian dictatorship because they are ultimately capitalists 
this is the thing that annoys me about people who fucking go for Marxism and they say that it makes a more equitable society. It's always about the money and the resources. Who do you want to pick the winners? Government or the free market? I prefer the free market. And, you know, like I said, I, I say it all the time on here. I have some socialist ideas in my head. Like, I think that if you work your entire life, you should be hooked up with a nice little pension. However you do that at the end of your life. And that should be, personally, if it was my doing, what I would say is that Social Security is done. But what we are do, doing is putting our money in a world a total world stock market fund. That way your money will grow. It's attached to you. When you go to retire, you can pull it out. You can't pull it out for anything. It can't be taken from you. So like if you go into debt, you know, like medical debt, you know, it's not, they're not going to come and raid your pension at the end of your life. I don't know how to work that out, but that's a socialist idea. Embracing capitalism at the same time. But you know, a communist united party, and they are united in their one goal to dethrone America. And this should concern all Americans. Because I'm just going to say this out loud. Well, obviously I'm going to say it out loud. I'm talking on my podcast. But I'm just going to say it. If China attains the same level of power that the United States has over China... The rest of the world, freedoms are going to be impacted. Now, do I think that, do I think that in the United States, me speaking out against the Chinese government is going to uh, involve me getting sent to prison in America? No, but I do believe there will be financial consequences for me speaking out against them committing an act of genocide. You know, that's... Let, they could sanction, they could literally sanction the U.S. and they would do that for speech. So the Americans aren't going to sanction, it's just like, whatever, Chinese guy, you know, you're over there. Okay, you, you don't like, you don't like what we're doing over here. We don't care. You know, the U.K., when they were protesting our Second Amendment, we're like, Okay, dude, do I come to your country and protest your law, your fucking fundamental rights in your country? No, but we don't sanction people. China will sanction people. And it's a danger. What threat do I see them economically? This is a tough one. Because you have to understand something about China. China is going to be the first country that gets old before it becomes truly rich. You see, that one-child policy is really going to impact China down the line in their plans for world domination. Also, all the countries in the world are debasing their currency, including China. Problem is, we set all our industry over there and the only place... They're the only place that makes anything anymore. But, you know, there's a hope. I, I really do hope that the United States decouples from China, which is what I would do, and really ramps up its alliance with India. Why India? India is going to be the most populous country in the world. It's going to be the largest market in the world. They have a lot of democratic ideas in India. So I think, honestly, India is the future if you're looking to the East. I really do because I think that a lot of companies with the rampant intellectual theft from China, if I was, if I was, a, if I was a, a member of an Indian government, I, I would get in the prime minister or whatever they have over there in their ears. What we need to install here is a counter to China is strong intellectual property protections. We do that. Then we can then go to American companies like, hey man, you want to manufacture over here? Uh, we're not going to, we don't demand anything. Your intellectual property is your intellectual property. So, I mean, why would I, even if it's cheaper, why, 
why would I want to manufacture in China when they're going to steal trade secrets from me? You know, that's the play. So, I mean, I don't know if we're going to wake up one day and China's going to own America. Even if they did, good luck sending the Communist Party over here to explain to Americans how China is now in charge of America. I'd be like, uh, yeah, man, um, I get that. Let's take a quick drive out to the country so that you can explain that to these people. <laughs> you just see the crackling of gunfire as all these fucking commies are wiped out. But it's everywhere. Hunter Biden counting his China money. And then you got this dude, Eric Swalwell. And, you know, this douchebag, this dude is such a dork. And uh, he was one of those guys that was during the presidential campaign. Like, dude, you're not going to be president. I can just look at motherfuckers and tell you you're not going to be president. I can just say that. Like, you're up here as the illusion of choice. So this dork is... Uh, I don't know, he's a senator or a congressman. Let's see. California congressman. And he met this saucy little Chinese number. She's a little cutie pie named Fang Fang. And Fang Fang helped him with the Asian community out there get elected. Okay. And turns out Fang Fang is a communist spy and this guy was sleeping with her. Now, does that mean that I think that this guy was selling state secrets to uh, China? No, but what it does show is that China is the honeypot trap. Every country uses it. Send a saucy little number after this dude who's obviously a dork because he's desperate to win a popularity contest so he can make rules for other people. It's nothing more I, that I despise. Well, there's a few things that I despise more, but like of the of the not like criminal hurting people level, there's few people I despise more than politicians. But yeah, so this dork met her. She starts seducing him. But I mean, that's the level of influence that these people have. You know, it's, they're over here. You know, we got to backtrack for a second too. Um, New York leads a massive antitrust suit from 48 attorney generals against predatory Facebook to force it to sell Instagram and what WhatsApp. See, <clears throat> this is what I think is going to happen with big tech. It's my prediction. Big tech's going to try to go to the China route. So we're already seeing it you know, stifle uh, conservative speech. Um, what I think is going to happen is Google and all these Silicon Valley companies are going to push their luck a little bit too far. And the people are going to get fed up to the point that they demand action be taken against Google and Twitter for their censorship. And even though I know big tech is in bed with the Democratic Party, I think what Google doesn't understand by removing the election was rigged stuff, because it was, you know, I, <clears throat> there's voter fraud in every election. Do I think it was a massive turning point? I think what it was was collusion by the big guys, the big tech companies, to only put forth negative news about Trump. It's why Nancy Pelosi didn't get a stimulus package going. Is no other reason than they didn't want that fresh in people's mind that a stimulus was passed. That's a real reason that it wasn't passed. But it's just going to become more and more obvious what they're doing. And that is the fundamental problem with elitism. See, these liberal... Coastal elites have a disdain for working class people with blue collar sensibilities because 
you know, it, 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 they just, they think you're better than you. They think you're dumb. If you have a manual labor job, you're a mason, you're dumb. You're not the, on the same level as this guy who's a lawyer for Google. Um, they're biased, their biases and, you know, working with China on censorship. It's going to lead them to take more and more, they're going to take a more and more liberal approach to policing conservative speech. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a massive backlash. See, what the elites want is basically a form of authoritarianism in the United States. This is what you're seeing with the Marxist ideology that's taught in colleges now where you have people from Antifa. They're all young. If you look at them, you have very few middle-aged dudes with a job out there. There's some, but most of the middle-aged dudes out there are not dudes that are expected to be at work the next day. They're lost, they're listless, and they get sucked into a call. They're useful idiots. But what, in a lot of ways, is wanted by big business, big tech, you know, the people that sit and they sneer at people that live a country lifestyle, you know, one where you don't worry about what other people are doing, you don't really care, you just go about your business. What they want is a form of authoritarianism. It's, exa- it's, the, it's great reset. That's ultimately what they all want. I talked about this before. They're underestimating the rebellious spirit of America. They just are. There's only a certain level of there's only a certain level of this crap that we're all going to tolerate. And in fact, I'm at the point where I'm not going to tolerate it anyway. You know, whether it's <clears throat> progressive speech or conservative speech. You know, if it was a conservative media company out there censoring liberal speech, I'd look at whoever was there. I'd be like, this isn't right, man. Everybody gets their seat at the table. This is how we do it in America. We talk to each other. Okay, here's why what you're saying doesn't work. Yeah, okay, Antifa guy, you, you want communism, BLM guy. You want a quality of outcome. There's no such thing as a quality of outcome. It does not exist. It cannot exist. The reason that it does not exist is that you will not have equality of outcome anywhere in the world. There is Kim Jong Un in your in the, the most communist place on the planet. Kim Jong-un does not have a quality of outcome. It's a nice word that people use in order for you to give up your rights. It's like, well, you know, you're being selfish. You need to give a dollar to a person of color because of historical injustices. Well, if you show me the guy that I committed an injustice against, I'm willing to give him a dollar. But if you're going to bring up a hypothetical, I'm going to look at you and tell you to eat a dick. And these are all just nice little pie in the sky sayings that people like to throw around that are just not congruent with reality. And you don't want equality of outcome. I don't understand why anybody would ask for equality of outcome. I literally read this stuff and I sit and I ponder. I ponder, why would you... Why would you want equality of outcome? Why would any person want equality of outcome? The only thing that I can come up with is that you're not willing to do the work required. That's the only thing I can come up with when I think this thing out to its logical conclusion. Because, so, we all enter a poker contest and we all leave with the same amount of money. Nobody won. That's a quality of outcome. In a quality of outcome, everybody ultimately wins but ends up losing. That's how that works. 
You know, it's it, that's the only thing I can think of. I, I is that you just you want to drop everything to the lowest common denominator, so that you don't have to spend any time suffering in earning what you want. And I, you know, I I I would agree with a lot of these people that inequality in inequality of income has gotten out of control in this country. I would agree with you. But the ultimate cause of that is crony capitalism, to be honest with you. We had a much more equal society in the 1950s and 60s. And that's not for any other reason than big business wasn't necessarily in bed with Washington at that time to the level that people think that it was. It was really in the 1960s that big business started buying off politicians and then that just accumulated over time. But before that, we had a much more constitutional republic. Okay, so. But a quality outcome. So what you're saying to me is, and I guarantee you, they say they want it, right? But when presented with it, I don't think that they really do want it. Because here's what happens. Ultimately, when you have a quality of outcome, right? Let's say every day, you can do, I could do this experiment with people if I had the money. I, I would do it for Antifa. I'd be like, okay, you guys want to earn money, right? I'd be like, okay. So... I need you to stack these bricks over here. And I'm going to give you each $100. On the first day, it's going to be a pretty... Everybody's going to work hard and everybody's going to do it. Because that's how it works in the beginning. So you make your brick pyramid. They've stacked their brick pyramid. It's $100 for an hour's worth of work. Okay. So... About the second day, still nobody's really saying anything. We run this experiment, and it's called the freeloader problem. I guarantee you there's going to be one guy who does a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less. See, what I would do if ideally I was running this experiment to show these Antifa fucking dorks why their communist ideals don't work. Why this, why this, th th why communism doesn't work is in this. You can use anything as an experiment. You need to carry out a task. You're going to take a hundred people, right? And I'm going to take off. I'm going to say to them, okay, I need project X completed in three hours. I'll be back. If it's not completed, nobody gets paid. But if it is completed, everybody gets paid. Right? So, you know, first couple times we do it, of course, everybody's going to be pitching in. And one guy's going to notice that he can get away with a little bit less work. And I'm not there to monitor, right? I, I would, I'd watch it, but I'm not really there to monitor or say anything to anybody. I just, but I need project X completed in this, let's just use eight hours in this day, but it would be really easy. So, or now three, cut it down, whatever the project is, you wouldn't want to make it too much work that people wouldn't want to do it for X number of dollars. But so we run this experiment out. Okay. Some people are just going to take off and take an extra long lunch, even though it's not completed because they worked hard yesterday. Right? Then people just show up. They'll sign their name. That's why you got to use a lot of people. They'll sign their name and then they'll come back at the end of the time. Right? They did absolutely nothing. And then they get their $10 or whatever. X number of dollars. Right? You run this experiment with college kids over a summer. Okay? This would end the idea of communism in these kids' heads. Because in this project, you would find eventually that you'd look around 
and 5% of the people would be doing all the work. And then they're going to come to you as the boss and be like, listen, why are these guys getting paid every day? Me, Steve, you know, Larry and John, we show up, we bust our ass. And those guys over there are just sitting around clowning around because they realize they didn't have to do anything, but they get paid the same. Like, yeah. So at this point, you've learned a valuable lesson. Do you want capitalism or do you want socialism? The socialism always ends up with the free rider problem and thus it has to end in authoritarianism. It's just, that's how it has to end. So, I mean, you don't really want a quality outcome as much as you say that you do. You don't want a quality outcome. I don't want a quality of outcome. You know, this would be a really interesting, if I was some rich capitalist dude like Jeff Bezos, I'd get a hold of him, be like, man, let's run an experiment. You got the cash to do this. We're just going to show these Antifa guys, you know, the difference between capitalism and socialism. Don't think that China doesn't want a, us to join them on the authoritarian regime and be a little satellite regime because they're already infiltrating. But you know what? Nah, I'm not going to talk about that. It's funny though. Deadly Mexican cartel bought parts for military grenade launchers, rifles, and machine guns through eBay. I doubt they bought grenade launchers and shipped them from LA to Mexico. But yeah, you know what, we're, we're going to, yeah, we'll talk about gun control tomorrow. I'll pretty much talk myself out on this, but all right, if you listen, thanks for listening. If not, I don't know what to tell you. Like and subscribe or don't.